What are the best modifications for a Tesla Model 3? We're going to find out in this video what the best mods are to do and what the possibilities are. And I thought, what better place than McDonald's car park to do it? So here she is. She's a beaut, isn't she? So I thought what better place to tell you about the best modifications on a Tesla Model 3 would be McDonald's. Because as everybody knows, everyone loves to go to McDonald's to show off their modified cars. And this particular car here, which is mine, is a Tesla Model 3 long range. And as you can see, it's not standard. But this video is gonna to talk to you about the modifications I've done, the best ones, the worst ones, and also what's possible on Tesla Model 3s. So if you're like me and you really enjoy making your car look different, upgrading the performance and the braking and just making it all round just better, then this is the video for you. So I bought this car about two and a half years ago, uh, completely standard Tesla Model 3 long range and I, not soon after buying it, I started modifying it and I wanna take you through the modifications I've done so far. So one of the first modifications I did was this unplugged performance bottom splitter. Now, there's loads of different splitters on the market, and you'll see that most people buy them from AliExpress, loads of different companies out there, eBay, Amazon, you've got loads and loads of choice. But one thing to remember on front splitters is they get hammering, certainly with my driving and with the British roads. So I always recommend to buy something that's going to be durable. Now, the good thing about this particular front splitter is the fact that what it's made out of, it can take an absolute hammering and it has done. I mean, it's taken a few knocks down at the bottom, but as you can tell, it hasn't fall into pieces because I see loads of Tesla Model 3s that have been modified where this has got a massive knock or even a small knock and there's bits that have flaked off. So something just to be aware of, if you're getting a bottom splitter, make sure it's durable. This particular splitter costs about 690 quid, um, which is a lot of money because you can get cheap ones for about 100 quid. However, what makes this a really good splitter isn't the fact that it's just durable, but it does actually make some difference on the aerodynamics. So it doesn't affect your range. In fact, it's supposed to make 0 0.0001, no, maybe not that, little but it does make a difference on aero so you know a nice mod which is for man function now you may notice that the car is actually sitting quite nicely with these wheels and i'll get to the trims in a minute but this car is actually on iback lowering springs now it's not ideal just to put springs on your car, but it is a good mod if you want to save some money. And these IBAT lowering springs were actually, uh, I got them used actually, 100 quid, but normally you can get some decent springs for two, 300 quid, get them fitted at most uh, car centers. But these particular IBAT springs, I've had them on for two years, they've been comfortable and they do improve the ride quality as far as I'm concerned. Although, you know, there is the issue with bump stops hitting those because obviously, it's just the springs and not the coilovers. So I would recommend if you've got the money to go for coilovers and I'll get into the coilovers, what the best ones are to have in a minute. You may notice also is the wheels on a standard Tesla Model 3, they do hide in the arches quite a bit. And another mod for really only uh, the look is having uh, spacers. And this is running 25 mil spacers and it just looks and sits much much better these particular aero discs now they might not be to everyone's taste but you can get black ones or white ones and there's loads of other wheel trims that you can get on the market these wheel trims just simply go over the wheels that are underneath here let me take them off and i'll show you so these clip on with these clips around the outside. Now, I've had these for a while and they've not been the most durable because as you can tell, we've got a couple of clips missing. And because the reason is, because these rust up uh, quite a bit. I've actually got a new set which have been uh, given to me by EV Base and I'll be fitting them later in the video. What I'm gonna do is apply them with some sort of grease or something to stop them rusting so they're easier to take on and off. 
The wheels, these are the standard 18 inch wheels and they're great wheels. They're actually made by Enkai, so they're nice and light. Uh, you may have seen other Teslas which have the 19 inch wheels, uh, which are an option. Or if you've got a performance model, you, they come with the 20 inch wheels. Problem with the 20 inch wheels is they're quite heavy um, and with the ride quality, they're not obviously as good, especially on the British roads. The keen Tesla uh, owners or people that know about Teslas will notice that I've actually got some red performance calipers. Now, a lot of people say that the performance brakes do not fit under the 18 inch wheels. However, they do. And there is a video which I'll put up here on the screen to show you how we fitted them and the process. The problem with the brakes on Tesla Model 3s, especially the long range and the standard range, is if you're gonna be using them quite a bit and not using it as an efficient car, I don't think they're up, up really to scratch. Um, so if you're, if you're braking heavily in Mexico, um, then they tend not to be kind of good enough. So because I like to uh, hammer it sometimes and uh, I like, I'm like i gonna be taking this on track, I went for the upgraded performance calipers and discs and I've also put some Carbotech pads, which are some track race pads, which make a hell of a difference to the braking. So I've got no qualms, no worries about uh, braking from high speeds, brake fade, and it really makes a hell of a difference, a fantastic mod on a Tesla. When we're talking about suspension, now, as I mentioned, I've only got the IBAC springs, which are a cheap mod, makes it look a bit better, makes it a bit firm on the road. However, there are so many different options when it comes to suspension. I'm going to recommend the ones that I think are not only really good value but also they really do perform kw suspension is the best suspension you can get pretty much for any car and you can get um, quite a few different versions there is a company in america called mountain pass performance they do their own suspension but it is kw suspension that they have specifically tuned for teslas and i've had parts from them before and great service and they really do know what they're talking about. If you want to order it in the UK and get it fitted, I'd recommend RHEL Engineering, which is where a lot of my modifications are done, and also my Tesla powered TVR, and that's in my other feeds on the channel. Something that I think lets down the Tesla Model 3 quite a bit is, because it's probably not my cup of tea, is the fact that it's normally got a wooden trim along here. Now, most people opt for the suede replacement. I've gone for the white, uh, which was just a um, addition which has gone over the wood, but you can uh, replace it for directly with a white one that's come out of a car. And I think it really changes the look of the car, but there's so much more that you can do to these cars inside. So you can change the steering wheel. Now, a lot of people have a yoke steering wheel. That's not my cup of tea, but there are so many different steering wheels you can get on the market and there's some really tasty ones. And I'm a bit of a steering wheel pervert, truth be told, and I will eventually change the steering wheel, although I really like the standard ones. But if you've seen the Tesla Model 3 Highland, which is the new shape Tesla Model 3, the performance version has uh, the specific sports seats, which are now available. And not only do they look the absolute nuts, they are super comfortable. Having driven a Tesla Model 3 Performance, they really do hold you in a lot better because these particular seats, they do not hold you in too well. Um, they're okay, but you do really have to kind of hold on. So if you're going on the track or you're giving it some pasty around a corner, you're probably better off investing in a pair of those seats. And here's a picture of them, sexy. There is so much you can do. In the UK, you've not really seen probably many modified Tesla Model 3s, but in America, it's huge. So when it comes to bodywork, you can do a hell of a lot. There's multiple body kits you can get. As I mentioned, front splitters, side skirts, uh, rear diffusers. If you see many modified Tesla Model 3s, a lot of people like to put a uh, quite big rear diffusers on them and then change the rear spoiler. On the Tesla Model 3 long range, it doesn't come with any spoiler and a really, really cheap mod is just to put the performance rear spoiler, which is what I used to have on this. Uh, recently, I've actually changed to this particular spoiler. I'm still not sure about it, 
Um, but this is the one that I'm gone for at the moment because I'm going for a bit more of a white theme. Let's start talking about what the possible performance options are. So a lot of people will think, ah, oh, you can't remap an electric car, you can't make them faster, they're boring, white goods, etc. It's just a load of bollocks because where maybe with the Tesla Model 3 performance, you can't actually improve the performance on that yet, but there is so much going on in the EV world and modification world in that scene that I'm sure it won't be long until there are little upgrades you can do. However, on the standard range and the long range, there is things you can do. Now, if you don't want to void the warranty on a Tesla Model 3 long range, you can have the acceleration boost. Look into that because there's loads of stuff on the internet about that, but it's 1500 quid and it changes your 0 to 60 from 4.4, 4.2 down to about 3.9, 3.7. I did it at Santa Pod and raced this car, Rusty is what I call my car, um, Again, there's lots of videos to talk about why I call it rusty when we're fitting the springs. So go back and watch the videos to make a bit more sense. But yeah, I took it to the track and I raced, uh, went down this drag strip standard and down the drag strip with acceleration boost. And it made a notable difference actually. And I got a uh, quarter mile time about 11.9. Um, and then I got a refund the next day because you can get a refund within 48 hours. Get all your money back. Happy days if you didn't like it but you can only do that once. Right, I'm off to go and get a coffee from Dirty Mackie D's, so I would never have their food, because it's rank, um, just my, my opinion. Um, and then I'll tell you a bit more about what other modifications you can do to improve the performance and make it drift. See, I wasn't wrong about McDonald's, always having modified cars here. So, now I've got my caffeine fix, I can now tell you a bit more about what the best modifications are to do to your Tesla to make it faster. So on my car, I fitted something called Nginx Boost 50. Now, this is a company that is based in Canada and it's a box of tricks that you can connect to your car to not only give you the same performance as the acceleration boost, so improving your performance, 0 to 60, etc., but also on the long range, it doesn't have something called track mode. And the track mode you can only have on the Tesla Model 3 Performance, which is something where you can turn off some of the traction control, you can change the bias from front to rear in terms of the uh, where the power is, so you can start drifting it. You can't do that in the long range, and you can't do that in the standard range, which is something that, being a bit of an ex-drifter into my Jap cars, Skylines, etc., is something that was really quite appealing to me. So the Nginx Boost 50 not only allows you to turn traction control off, but it also gives you the drift mode. And there's gonna be more about that in the channel coming up soon. It also has quite a few other features on there, um, which if you go back and watch a couple of videos about us fitting it, it's on there as well. Now, it's not just for the long range because they also do one for the standard range too, which again, increases the performance and gives it the opportunity of drift mode as well. So in a couple of months, I'm gonna be getting the speaker exhaust system. Yes, that's right. You can fit a speaker exhaust system to your car. Check out this video. Right, I'm back at home now, and I thought I'd show everyone what the new wheel caps look like. And they're black. Yes, they are. Now, I don't think it particularly goes with the chrome, which I am soon to be changing. But what do people think? Whack it in the comments. Black or white? Whack it in the comments. What do people think? So these wheels came from EV Base and they've sent me a couple of parts. Um, this particular rear spoiler came from them as well, but they've got a whole raft of different uh, modified parts to update your Tesla and personalize it and many other EVs as well. So check them out. Uh, I've got a discount code here. I'll put that up on the screen now. And the uh, link for the website is in the description. Check it out. Now I really like the white ones. But the black ones are actually starting to grow on me. And a little upgrade from the white ones is uh, these ones actually have a place for the tyre valve, which wasn't on the old ones I had. So every time I wanted to pump up the tyres, I had to take them off. 
and they're not the easiest to take off. Yeah, they are a bit of a nightmare. But what I've done is to make them easy to take off, I've put uh, WD-40 on these metal bits here because I found that they were getting rusty, probably from the salt on the British roads. So I'm hoping that gives it a layer of protection and makes them easier to come off. So that's the most up-to-date mod I've done on the Tesla. One thing I didn't show you, which is this rather cool rear screen that I've fitted. Um, and this screen not only pl plays videos, uh, you can also get it to play Netflix, YouTube, TikTok. You can even play computer games off the back of it. You've also got functionality for the people in the back, uh, giving you heated seats, um, massage on the back using the lumbar support, which is quite cool. And they can also change their um, uh, the fan controls at the back as well. On the 1st of December at Gasoline and Juice, yep, you heard me correctly, Gasoline and Juice. A bit like Caffeine and Machine, like a, a location for car enthusiasts to meet up we've got an ev meet there it's going to be majority tesla model 3s but all evs are welcome and i'm hoping that we're going to get some other modified evs and ev conversions there i'll be doing a video on it as well um, but it'd be great to see what other modified evs there are out there but that's the first of december at gasoline and juice check out the socials charge heads is on facebook instagram tiktok x and also linkedin so that's it for this episode just to tell you a little bit more about what you can do to a tesla model 3 and there are other evs you can modify this scene has only just begun it's only gonna increase in the number of products you can get to customize so keep an eye on charge heads for all the latest news on modified evs ev conversions and essentially having a load of fun with electric vehicles see you next time